This past Monday, the nation paid tribute to its war dead. Good Sunday morning, everybody. It's those unfinished stories or un and even untold stories that we're going to focus on today with Bill Beagle. Bill is, uh, how would you describe you? It's, it's too simple to describe you as a military historian. Right. I think a better way to describe me as a researcher of World War II and Korean War casualty records. We're going to look at four individuals, right. all of whom served in the Navy during World War II. Right. They also had something else in common. Right. They all went to. They all went to UCLA. Which and you graduated from there. Yes, as I well. did. A bachelor's degree and a master's degree from UCLA. Any particular uh, reason why you focused on UCLA for some of this work? Well, the reason I focused on it was that I did have some feeling of attachment to my old school, even though it's been many years now. And I did some research on the internet and found that they did have a list of their students and faculty that had died during World War II. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't much else there. So I contacted the military science department that produced the list and said that as a volunteer project, I would be interested in finding out the stories of the about 200 names that they had. Mm -hmm. And typically people pay me to do my work, but I, f I felt a connection to UCLA. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be a great project. Not only did I find out information on these 200 names, but I found another 61 names that they didn't even have on their list. Oh. Mm -hmm. So why don't we begin? There was, um, he's an Ensign Patterson. Yeah, P Ensign Peterson. Peterson. Right. Peterson. We've got a photograph of him. Tell us about him. Well, Ensign Peterson was an out-of-towner. He was actually from Atlanta, uh -huh. and uh, by some means he ended up going to UCLA, uh, became uh, a naval pilot, and in 1944 in the Pacific he was returning from a raid, uh, had been hit by anti-aircraft fire, and crashed on a little airstrip in the middle of the Pacific, killing him and the two men in his plane. Mm -hmm. And part of what was such a sad story about, about Peterson is that um, due to a few errors, it took a long time to get his remains brought back to Atlanta where his mother wanted them. She was a single mother. His father was not in the picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how much was involved in getting to that point? Well, it was, it was a challenge because uh, I didn't have a serial number for him, and so especially with a common last name like Peterson, uh -huh. if you don't have that serial number, you're not going to get any luck. And so I finally worked with the Naval Historical Research Center in, at the Washington Navy Yard, mm -hmm. and they were able to get me some squadron records for him. And the great part about that was somewhere on the fifth page, it showed his service number, and that was the key to me getting the rest of his records. Mm -hmm. So I did. I worked with the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis, mm -hmm. and a few months later, there I had this giant stack of paper that was his military career. Mm. Uh, w any other distinguishing events during that career? Well, he he was a, a UCLA student and had done well at UCLA. He was not a frat guy. A lot of the guys I researched were members of fraternities or the sports teams. So he was more of a typical kind of guy, which I liked. Mm -hmm. And he had a very solid naval career, um, but it ended the way that so many of these careers did on an island uh, in the middle of nowhere. I think the airstrip was called the Torokino mm -hmm. airstrip, and mm -hmm. you know I'm sure now it's long since overgrown and forgotten. Or developed. Or developed. Who knows? Sure. Who knows? Sure. Um, and you mentioned that you were able that his remains were returned. recovered. Right. That's somewhat unusual. Yeah, for especially for flyers of any kind. Um, the odds were against the remains being returned, either because so many of these guys went down over the ocean, or they went down over the Himalayas. They went down over areas that you, you simply could never find the remains again. And in fact, of the 406,000 Americans who died in World War II, over 70,000 are yet to be recovered. And probably never will be. Probably never will, but if you, if you watch and you research, every month or so you'll find a small plane was found somewhere on, in New Guinea, and they did some DNA testing and they were able to find a few of the guys, but yeah, most of them will never be found. For more information about the fascinating work that Bill Beagle does, uh, the name of your company is? 
personalized World War II historical research. There you are. And you can find uh, this fascinating site that he has. It's www2research.com. You don't need the www in front. It's just www2research.com. And the phone number is 310-791-3949.